Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. I'm Gus. Look, piracy's been around since uh, pretty much the start of video games. If You know what, since the start of digital stuff. Yeah. If you could find a way to get it for free, people did. Back in the 80s, people actually made copies of floppy disks and shared games for free with others. That was like a whole scene. Of course, nowadays, it's got a little bit more complicated. It's gotten easier and more difficult. Back in my day, we had instruction manuals that we had to reference. You What's the fifth word on line three on page 14 of the manual? I remember that copy <laughs> protection. There were also ones where uh, I, with uh, Leisure Suit Larry where you had to uh, answer questions that they thought only someone at least 18 would know mm -hmm. in order to prove you were an adult. Do you remember also the, they weren't as popular, but the code generation wheels? It was like two, two discs that were tied together and it's like, Turn disk A to position one and turn disk two to position three. What is the number that it says? The password is always drink your oval tea. The password, but we digress. The password is buy the game. Okay, but anyway, piracy has always meant the same thing regardless of how you approached it. Swiping video games for free and it's pretty clear cut that way. All right, so with all that in mind, here is the most ironic story ever when it comes to stealing video games. This one is peak internet. Apparently the folks who made some piracy software for the Switch are worried about their software being pirated. Wow, so what did they do about it? Realize the massive contradiction and slap their foreheads? Yes, that's exactly what they did. No, they didn't. They put anti-piracy software on it. And if you tampered with it, it could break your Switch. Yeah, like we said, this story is pretty great. Uh, the piracy program is called SXOS, which the developers Team Executor are charging money for, uh, you know, so you can then go and play pirated games. Look, you know what? You gotta spend money to not spend money. Right, I mean, they, uh, these hardworking developers, they deserve <laughs> to be paid for their work they put into piracy software, right? Right, yeah. pay us money for letting you play stolen games. It makes sense, they've it e really does. They've even advertised it on YouTube, uh, and while there is They got a, that ad dollars. Yeah, and there, while there is a free version of SXOS available, that firmware only allows Switch players to play homebrew software. Right, if you want to play pirated Switch games, you gotta pony up some cash and buy a licensed copy of SXOS from an authorized reseller. Uh, yeah, you know, the time-honored tradition, the old authorized pirate software. Yeah, we actually checked out uh, that one site we found was selling it for 35 bucks. And to make sure that they're reimbursed properly and that no one else steals their hard work, Team Executor also added anti-piracy software that breaks your switch if it thinks you're trying to crack it. This feels like a question from the Watchmen. Uh, who pirates the pirates? That's not quite right. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what the That was it? Was. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look, even pirates want to make sure they get paid fair and square. It's just, it's... That's, it's what you do. Okay, so the way it works is if you try to load the paid version of SXOS without a valid license, the firmware will lock up your system's internal NAND memory behind a password. The delicious irony, of course, was discovered by vulnerability researcher Mike Heskin, who had his own switch bricked by the software. He tweeted, PSA, SXOS contains brick code. How do I know this? Take a guess. Luckily, he was able to unbrick his console, but it's a really complicated process and nearly impossible if you don't know what you're doing. Which, I mean, I, I would not. Mm -hmm. So, what do the pirates have to say for themselves? Well, a team executor rep told The Verge that it was just a harmless cat and mouse game between aspiring hackers and competing teams. They have a rep who's giving, like, statements? You know, maybe it's like a, like a dance-off, except it's like a, a hack-off. Uh, they added, we do not brick any consoles ever. We do implement inconveniences to safeguard anti-tampering of our SXOS boot file to remain at a competitive advantage. It would simply be bad business to intentionally harm a user's console. Oh boy. Yes, that all makes perfect sense. The executor member also said, our product has been designed with the greatest possible stability and polish. Whenever someone is running our SXOS, they can be assured they are running a safe and well-tested product. We cannot guarantee equal functionality and performance when any changes are made and therefore do not support any unauthorized modifications. So you're saying no mod support. <laughs> no mod support. That's the most corporate sounding pirate I've ever heard of. There were a lot of buzzwords. Yeah. All right, so all this has to do with the Switch hardware exploit that has been discovered pretty recently, well, recent-ish, and has caused an explosion in the Switch homebrew and piracy scenes. This exploit has to do with a boot ROM flaw in the Switch's Tegra X1 processor, and because it's a hardware flaw, that makes it pretty hard to patch. As because in, it, you can't. Right, when it comes to hardware, it's not like you can patch a new processor on your console. Yeah, the exploit gets kind of technical, but it allows the hacker to bypass the security of the boot ROM by using another computer connected by USB to the Switch. That basically jailbreaks the Switch, which means it can run any kind of software that they want, and that's opened the door to piracy software like we're seeing in this case. And, you know, also homebrew, but also piracy. piracy. Uh, Nintendo might already be trying to deal with this. It certainly looks like it. There have been hints Nintendo's working on a slightly updated version of the Switch with a different version of the Tegra processor, but 
you could understand that why they would be keeping that quiet. They'd want to just roll mm -hmm. those switches out there and close that hole as quickly and as quietly as they can. Also, it takes a while to burn through the inventory you've already made. You have to design a new version of the switch, test it, and manufacture get it into it, manufacturing. Distribute it. It yeah. takes a while. So this could be an early attempt by the company to start working the old processor out of Switch models and limit the pool of available hackable consoles. But of course, there are already a lot of Switches out there. The consoles already become one of the fastest selling consoles of all time. In January, Nintendo says they sold more than 14.8 million Switches in the current fiscal year and forecasts they want to sell a total of 37 million units by April 2019. So that's a lot. And I want to highlight how catastrophic this could be. A similar issue is pretty much what killed the Dreamcast. People were able to pirate games because of bootloaders. It's a big deal. It uh, really could be. Yeah, I mean, recalling all those switches is not economically feasible for Nintendo, which again, might be why they could be working on a version with a new processor, but at this point, that might be too late. Uh, which brings us back to all this piracy craziness. And this is not the first time that someone has injected nastiness in some good, clean piracy software. <laughs> well, back in 2015, there was a whole controversy, well, I mean, one of many, uh, with the Pirate Bay, where its users were contracting malware that infected their PCs, and it did worse than breaking a machine Yo, it's still their banking information. Of course, piracy has a long, long history on Nintendo consoles. There's a big homebrew scene on the DS, for example, and there was a ton of soft modding on the original Wii. Well, piracy was also an issue on Nintendo's more recent consoles. Wii U and 3DS both had some vulnerabilities that let you download games straight from Nintendo's servers, even before they released which you can see being a problem. It's a problem. Nintendo has been fighting back when it comes to piracy on Switch. The well-known Nintendo hacker Cyrus M says the Switch's online network can locate specific hardware, making console bans permanent. It can also tie specific games, whether they're cartridges or digital, to a console, so it stands to reason they'll be able to pretty easily tell if a game is legit or yeah. not. Yeah, for his part, Heskin wrote on his blog that piracy is a despicable and toxic practice that goes directly against the morals and values of the homebrew community. It completely discredits our attempts to show companies that we're capable of building positive solutions by modifying their products. As for the Switch exploit that made all this recent piracy possible, Richard Ledbetter of Digital Foundry wrote that it's based on a hardware-based vulnerability that Nintendo cannot patch without releasing a new version of the console, meaning that the battle to keep piracy off the system and to ensure that online gaming remains secure will be waged in the software space. Well, Ledbetter added that Nintendo's already issued bans to hackers experimenting with compromised consoles, but a firmware update to patch up its OS hasn't happened yet. So it looks like the piracy wars will continue on the Switch until Nintendo releases a bunch of new Switches, but it looks like the current ones might always be vulnerable to this kind of hijinks. Right, so you'll see Nintendo putting in lots of uh, software checks, mm -hmm. or which is why you know they could theoretically lock up certain aspects of certain consoles. There have been reports that uh, if they think a console has been modified in some way, they're currently locking people out of the eShop and online services, which kind of makes sense because if you got bunch of people with pirated versions of software that may be changed. You don't want them participating in online games with people with the original software. It reminds me of the original Xbox days when people would mod it with dip switches and you could turn it on and off. Oh to, boy. To try to hide from Xbox Live. All right, what do you guys think of the anti-piracy software showing up with, oh my God, piracy software? Let us know in the comments. And for all your Switch news, be sure to like this video. And if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know. And make sure that they're reimbursed properly and no one else steals their hard work. Uh, two, damn it whenever someone is running our SX OS so. Uh, so this could be an early attempt by the company to start working the old switch process too late. Well, sort of. Uh, which brings us back to all the piracy craziness. And, and the, <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay.